It's June, which means it is time for the U.S. Open. Taryn Schaefer here with John Swantek and our very special <laughs> guest, the U.S. Open Trophy. This year, we've got a brand new venue on the U.S. Open circuit, Aaron Hills. It's going to be a fun time in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's only the longest U.S. Open uh, venue in history, 7,700 yards and change. Uh, it's going to be windy and it's going to be uh, disastrous if you are off the fairway, but uh, the landing areas in the fairway are pretty generous. So it's a little bit of relief to the guys. This is a par 72 course, very thick rough. Kevin Nash showed us that on Instagram earlier <laughs> yeah, this did. week. And of course, the favorite this week, the defending U.S. Open champ, Dustin Johnson, who hard to believe is making his first major championship appearance. Hopefully, I hope I didn't jinx him because we yeah. thought he was, you know, in April at the Masters and that didn't happen. By the way, first par 72 since Pebble Beach in 1992. So 25 years since we've had a par uh, 72. It will favor the long hitters uh, like Dustin, uh, who might get a little bit of a late start this week. He's about to become a dad for uh, the second time, so might not be rolling in until uh, Tuesday as we record this on U.S. Open Championship Week. I think that's okay. He's an instinctive, athletic player. I think uh, if he gets a look at the course on Tuesday or Wednesday, he'll be ready to roll. No big deal. Sometimes these life moments for these guys are good. They help propel them to some great finishes. Someone else that's having a life event this week, Phil Mickelson, might be missing out on the U.S. Open for his daughter Amanda's high school graduation. She's a valedictorian of her class. Mm -hmm. He said on Sunday he needs a four-hour <laughs> race delay on Thursday in order to make his tea time. Well, uh, he needs a big assist from uh, Mother Nature, but if he were to get it and uh, somehow make his way from Southern California uh, to north of uh, Milwaukee for the U.S. Open this week and somehow win and complete the career Grand Slam, I mean, we've got a movie script in, in the making here, too. Yeah, we do. Another movie script that we could have in the making if Sergio Garcia were to get another major championship win this season, of course, broke through at the Masters this year. So it could be pretty interesting to see how he does. No reason to think that Garcia will not comp uh, contend this week. And isn't it uh, fascinating how differently we're looking at Sergio Sergio now that he is a major champion. I think he's going to be full of confidence. His record in this event is pretty strong through the years. Yeah, he had an ace at the Players' Championship, uh -huh. so it's played, you know, decently well in other major venues this year. Rory McIlroy coming in under the radar a little bit, had his rib injury, you know, he re-aggravated his rib injury at the Players' Championship. We haven't seen him since, so interesting to see how he will do this week as well. Yeah, I remember him talking to you after the players, and he wasn't overly concerned. I think he's taken a very cautious approach in the week since the Players' Championship, understandably so, to get ready for this event, but you'd be foolish to uh, overlook Rory. All he did was win the U.S. Open by eight shots back in 2011. Let's talk about our picks for this week. Okay. Any of those guys catching your attention? Oh, they, they're all catching my attention, but I think Jason Day is the player that I'm taking a really hard uh, look at. I like the way his game is uh, trending, second in Dallas, 15th at the Memorial Tournament. I also think emotionally he's going through a lot of turmoil this year with his mom's health. That's beginning to settle down a little bit, so I think Jason's head is in uh, the best place perhaps that it's been all season. I also think he's going to blast that driving iron very effectively this week, and he's a great putter. That's, a, that's an awesome combination for Aaron Hills. Well, he's just an awesome package of a player mm -hmm. as it is. My player is a little unconventional pick for this type of course, Kevin Kisner. I know that doesn't really coincide with a bomber's paradise necessarily, but he is on fire as of late. His last two starts, T6 at the Memorial and, of course, a win at the Dean and DeLuca. He's only played in the U.S. Open three times, but his best finish was a T12 at Chambers Bay, which everyone's comparing Aaron Hills to. And you mentioned putting with mm -hmm. Jason Day. Well, Kevin Kisner is 23rd currently in strokes game putting, so not too shabby. I like the pick. Don't apologize. Fiery player, too, Kisner. I like it. Uh, keep your eye on Shane Lowry this week. Tied for second last year at Oakmont. Kind of got caught up in the whole Dustin Johnson uh, rules fiasco. He was uh, ninth at the U.S. Open a couple of years ago. Uh, he's an Irishman who I think is going to find the linksy feel of Aaron Hills very much to his liking here this week. A guy I think you should keep your eye on this week, Peter Uline, who's starting to really gain some momentum on the pro circuit, plays over in Europe currently, but is really one of the only guys that has any competitive experience here at Aaron Hills. Played in the USAM back in 2011 here, so maybe that could come in handy for him this week. Yeah, Kelly Kraft, the champion in 2011, not in the field, so uh, we will see. This is going to be 
fascinating. The 117th United States Open up for grabs starting on Thursday. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports Network coverage as well, and Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio. It all starts this Thursday to see who will be holding this uh, beautiful piece of hardware Sunday evening or perhaps Monday in the 117th United States Open.